Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So as you can tell by the title, I was planning on doing kind of like an update a tiny bit at least to the channel, including my icon and my intro and outro screen for my videos. But to start off, I wanted to first update my profile picture probably across all my social medias. So right here on the left side, you can see that that's kind of my old icon and that's actually of one of my fan arts of Wanu, kind of like really stylized, but I feel like people are getting confused and thinking that's me. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to this one over here, which will be hidden for now. Also, I forgot to mention the reason why I'm even using my current VTuber model is because I'm going to be referencing it as I'm drawing my new icon just because I want to use kind of my VTuber model as the kind of like main face of my channel. So moving forward instead of the wall new icon, even though I still really love Seventeen, I'm going to be moving on with my current kind of VTuber look for now. So let's get on with the drawing process. So starting with the drawing process, I am working in paint tool side today as I want to do a little bit more of a painterly style similar to how I did my original uh, Wanu profile picture. Now in the past, the reason why I even used Wanu as kind of like my profile picture was mostly because when I initially started out just like more or less getting more traction on social media and just starting out YouTube a little bit more with like actually making videos in a specific way. I was mostly a 17 artist or fan artist, so I mostly drew 17 and Wanu is my favorite member of 17. So it was easier for me to use one of my pre-existing fan arts for my icon. And for several years, it's been Wanu for, yeah, I even think like since my deviant art days. So I'm a little bit bittersweet in terms of like departing with my icon of Wanu just because one, it's familiar to me, and then two, it just feels like a new era in a sense. But it would be kind of nice to draw what I would consider my persona. So basically whatever my VTuber model looked like, so it would be easier for people to also identify me because I did not really know this like at the beginning especially, is that some people when I used to stream a little bit more frequently told me that they thought I was a guy as well so coming to the stream was a little bit uh not jarring but different and it's similar to the people who would only listen to my ASMR videos or like my keep me company videos or any of the ones where I don't really speak so people th assumed I was a guy because also my profile picture plus my little icon in the bottom left hand corner is of a male character or of a person so people would assume but I think it would be a little bit easier and a little bit less confusing if I actually use my persona as kind of like the the face of my social media going forward at least for until I want to do another change because like I know a lot of people even for like their profile pictures they don't draw themselves some people do I feel like a good chunk of people do but some people just choose like whatever is like their favorite artwork or whatever represents their art or even just their mood at the time of changing their profile picture so it's kind of like up to the person but I think this one will fit kind of nicely and you can see how attached I am to my previous icon that I'm sticking with a very very similar color palette and I'm kind of keeping the proportions very similar too. I am a little bit maybe it's because I'm too used to my current profile picture that I don't really want something with a drastic change. I would have maybe liked making my background more of a yellowy color. I don't remember what I had that profile picture for. I have another one of Wanu which has more of like a cream colored background which looks really cute. Oh wait the cream color background is actually from the original drawing. I just changed it to a light blue just because I preferred that aesthetic and I think it carried on from the previous icon from before that. And the little Wanu icon at the very bottom was actually a stamp design that I made a long time ago, but I thought because it was so simple looking, it kind of acts as a nice watermark. So I'm gonna debate whether or not I'm going to change that one moving forward. It's, oh wait, I forgot to talk about this too. Another reason why I even put a watermark in the corner of my videos was mostly because 
one, I am the only one who has access to the file of that little icon because I've never posted it anywhere. But also it was because I believe somebody was like reposting my videos on a different website. I don't know if they were claiming to be me, but it, for me, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, moving forward, if they ever posted videos claiming to be me, they wouldn't have that access to that icon at like full opacity. So it's kind of like a tiny bit of a safety measure, but at this point, I just feel comfortable leaving it in the corner, but I may change it to something else in the future, maybe like Hansuke or Masaki or something else, maybe even my own VTuber again. So let's talk about the artwork a little bit since I've just briefly touched upon it. Like I said, I didn't really want to stray away too much from the aesthetic. So I'm leaving in clovers. I added some little kind of like flowering puff ball type little shapes to kind of break up the entirety of like green surrounding my model so it'll be just a little bit of more color as well as just giving it a little bit of varied um, texture and a little bit of just breaking up the shapes a little bit but in terms of the process I did go with something a little bit more painterly which is why I chose paint tool side just because I know how the texture looks in terms of how the brush works in paint tool side every time I open up clip studio paint i feel like i'm playing around with new brushes i'm playing around with a different style of coloring or line work or something which is great and it's very fun but with something i want to be a little bit more efficient with i just like to default back into paint tool sai it's also the kind of program i like to use whenever i do um floral designs especially for the notebooks so in the future once i get my notebook situation figured out again, I will make a video talking about that because I like doing a lot of more of my floral drawings in Paint Tool Sai and maybe it's because it has more of a harsher edge and the way how I blend colors is a little bit less mixed in a sense so I have a lot more fun being able to paint foliage with kind of that crisp edge but in Clip Studio Paint and in Procreate, I definitely like having a softer touch. So I just feel like certain programs I use for certain things. So that's what I tend to do if I have like, oh, if I want to do floral, I'll stick to Paint Tool Sai. If I do want to do chibis as well as like line work, usually Paint Tool Sai is quicker, but I don't mind using Clip Studio Paint for those. But uh, I believe that's it for the end of this one though. So basically I kind of did a sketch. I cleaned up my sketch, set it to multiply, added colors underneath so we can move on with just merging my layers and then rendering the entire thing. I also blocked out like a little circle for the icon so you can tell what it will look like in the future. So that's what I currently have. I might lower myself on the entire circle so it, it kind of like encapsulates it a little bit better in terms of the framing but yeah i think that's it for the new icon and we'll move on to the end screen so i decided to cut the footage i believe of the intro screen because i'm basically using the same exact one for the 2024 version I'm just gonna change up the animation for it because I'm quite fond of the simplistic design and I feel like if I change it, I'm just gonna keep making it more and more complicated, which I don't think is really needed. And for the most part, I don't hate my intro or end card screen that much. I think I could have left my intro screen. But my outro screen, the thing that I'm changing the most, which you're seeing that I'm working on, is the chibi little version of me waving at the very end. So in the past, I had chibi versions of myself waving at the end, and I had an area for the kind of like previous video or latest video to be placed next to me, and then it will have my icon at the upper left-hand side. and. I don't know, I like the format of it and it kind of fits very well and I do like the theme of just having a chibi waving at the very end. I feel like I'm losing my voice. So I'm not going to change up the format of it, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. So it's going to take me a little bit of warming up in terms of having to see it every time I edit a video. So you can see that I have a whole mess of line work here. And the reason being is that I plan to rig both my intro and my outro screen. So for the intro screen, I just want the animation to be much more clear and more smooth. 
but I decided to change the animation. I might revert it back to the old version, but just make the animation smoother. So we'll see moving forward. But for the outro screen, because I'm planning to rig it, I did decide that I would just separate every part to what I would think is appropriate for the rig that I want it to have, which is going to be fairly simple. So I did do a few other videos in the past where I did, I think, the rigging for both my chibi model and my current model, alongside with a few other ones where I did animations using Live 2D. But more recently, at least for, I think, the last two birthdays, no, I only did it for, I think, Jonghan and I did it for D8's birthday, so in kind of like October and in November when I had time, I made like small animations for their birthdays using Live 2D just because I thought it would be a cute touch to like more of a chibi drawing, which I sometimes make it a little bit too simplistic. So the static version is just a tad bit boring. So I thought that because I knew how I wanted to break down certain areas to make a simple animation, I thought it'd be fun to apply that to my outro screen, which is what I'm currently doing. So this entire process is just me basically organizing my layers. I'm separating parts by kind of like having my line art in a separate color and my kind of base color as a separate color so I can easily identify them. And then I'll slowly start to kind of color them more appropriately. We can add shadows and make sure that things look a little bit more um, unified, if anything. So because it is the outro screen or end card or whatever you want to call it, and I feel like less people stick around till the end of the video, so which means less people see the chibi at the end, I didn't really care to make the chibi super detailed. I just made it detailed enough that it made sense to me. But compared to my old version of like my chibi self, this one's definitely more uh, detailed alongside with more effort. So yeah, it's a little more jarring, I feel like, with the transition from the old version to the new version versus like my current profile picture to the new profile picture, but that's okay. I believe we're nearing the end. Oh, I also gave myself like a little notebook and a pencil alongside with a carrot bong because why not? I wanted to be carrying something. Okay, so the rigging portion might be flying by quite quickly because this is just a headache not only to watch but a headache for me to rig things in general. So I was initially planning to have the same kind of little sweeping circle motion to reveal the clover of kind of like my logo. And I was gonna let that remain the same but I thought it'd be fun to just maybe change it up a bit and kind of like turn the clover and kind of resize it so that it kind of like fades in, but it fades in by like turning and then popping back a little bit. And I wanted the stem and my channel name alongside with the other logo, which is like the little two leaves together to pop in together. So I don't know if I like this, I might change it in the future, but for now, or at least for the next few videos, I think I'm gonna leave it as is. But the good thing about using Live 2D is that it does make my workflow for these kinds of animations a lot smoother. So once I finished adding all the parameters and rigging like whatever I wanted to rig, I moved it into the animation kind of like mode that Live2D provides so that I could basically put in all the keyframes and then save it as a video or a GIF. So the problem with that though is because the program's so powerful, my screen recording was having a hard time recording the animation process for that portion, like the intro screen. So I'm gonna be showing you guys more of it from the chibi version right here for the outro. And something different was that I wanted to separate the chibi and like the little plants at the bottom separate from the background this time. I thought it would just be easier for me to kind of like reposition or resize things if needed. So I decided to do the text and the background separately. And I'll basically use uh, Film Aura or Wondershare Film Aura to kind of edit the new outro screen before saving and exporting it so that I can use it for future videos. So talking about 
Live 2D a little bit. Live 2D is the program that I use to rig my models and I think that's like the most preferable program or software that people use to do rigging for VTuber models. I know some people do it for small animations. I feel like there's a lot of things you can do with it, but I'm very much like a noob at rigging and just like animation in general so a lot of this is still gonna be fairly janky and you're gonna see me kind of like attempt things reattempt things all in this kind of like time lapse version of me working on the rigging process so me doing the rigging is gonna allow me to have more options to have like smooth transitions or of like movement for each part of my little character here so right now the most time consuming part, at least for me, is the kind of like setting up your parameters and then moving your objects, setting up your keyframes and making sure that, you know, your corrective deformers are correctly placed with your keyframes and the certain objects and all that. Otherwise, when you move maybe the blinking, your head's not like wobbling back and forth. But there's a lot of things you can customize with it, which is kind of fun. And I've been hopefully planning to dabble into it more and more as we move forward. I think it'd be fun to animate Hansuke, who's like my little green cat character, a lot more because he's such like very simple shapes. I think it'd be fun to learn how to animate maybe more complicated things or at least like attempt more complicated concepts. Oh, I still want to do... I forget what it's called, but it's basically the thing for the hair so that it kind of flows more naturally. I still have to do that, so I will probably take time this year to learn more about Live 2D. So maybe in the future I'll make another video or two, um, maybe making another model or just like updating my current models with whatever new thing that I learned how to do in Live 2D. Just as like, I don't know, a progress update if anything. So the great thing about rigging with Live 2D or just like rigging in general, I'm pretty sure like people who are proficient in After Effects can definitely do something very similar, if not a little bit smoother than what I can do in like basically Live 2D. But I like being able to have like a full range of motion. But then when we get into the animation phase, I'm able to just kind of like pinpoint different points in a keyframe timeline. I don't know what you call it. I guess it's like my parameters and pick anywhere for my character to stop moving which makes it a lot easier to have a little bit more range of control so you'll see later that I only utilize a little bit of the head tilts I only use a little bit of the waving for its like full potential I guess even though I've rigged it so that it has a wider range of movement when it sways side to side but here you can see in kind of like this little area, I have two tabs open, which is like the animation, which is the yellow one. And then we have my rigging one, which is kind of like the orange file. So I basically imported it to the animation file and the little gray dots you're seeing on the white little grid or bars is basically all my keyforms that I'm kind of timing different objects at different intervals, but at each interval, I'm able to kind of change what that parameter is kind of doing. So sometimes the gray dot represents the hand moving to the left, sometimes it's moving to the center or back to the right. So it's easier for me to kind of manipulate and kind of like vary up the intensity of how much I want, I, I guess like a certain object to move. I also have like breathing and glowing. I also have my little leaves on my head kind of swaying back and forth. But hopefully that wasn't too boring for you guys. I'll show you guys both my intro screen, my old and my new one, alongside with the old and the new end card or end screen. But I think that's about it and I'll talk to you guys in a different model. So now with the entire process done, we have my old icon, we have my new icon, we have the intro screen and the new outro screen. I will be using them for probably starting on Monday's video and that's probably when I will, I guess like on the weekend, I will update my profile picture across all my social medias and I may also update the little corner icon on the bottom right, right down here. 
I think in the last few videos, I didn't really talk about this, but thank you very much for a wonderful 2023. And hopefully 2024 will be much more of a kinder year to all of us. And hopefully it'll be more of an exciting year as well. So yeah, I think that's it for today's video. And I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!